So, you're curious about what people do in cybersecurity. Maybe you've just graduated from school and you're interested in this career path, or you're just simply curious and you want to know what it's all about. Well, in this video, I'll explain to you guys what we do in cybersecurity in simple terms from a Security Operations Center Analyst or SOC. Let's say you're at work minding your own business when all of a sudden you received an email that has your manager's name on it. In this email, he's asking you to download this PDF attachment so you can fill out some details about payments. You look at the sender's email address and you notice that it's not your usual manager's email. The wording of the email is also a bit weird, like how he addresses you as hello friend. This is what we call phishing specifically a phishing email. Malicious people will use this type of technique to trick people into thinking that they're talking to someone they know, when in fact it's an impersonation. As a SOC analyst, this is our bread and butter. We have to constantly stay on top of these phishing email attempts and take actions against them. Actions like blocking the sender from our system and removing all similar emails from everyone's mailbox so no one else falls victim to it. Alright, let's say you didn't know better. You believe that this is your manager and you downloaded the PDF to fill in the details. When you open up the PDF, you see a website link. Now you're on the website which doesn't really look that suspicious to you. You put in your login credentials and then the website crashes. You stare at it blankly, only to finally realize that you may have fallen victim to a phishing website. You contact the IT help desk in which they inform the security team that an incident has happened. This is what we call incident response. A security operations center would have policies and procedures in place for responding to different types of incidents. In this case, a team member would talk to you to get as much information as possible about what happened. And in parallel, another team member would run checks on your activity to see if there's anything suspicious. Let's assume I'm in charge of checking your activity. This would be an investigation to look for IOCs, which stands for Indicators of Compromise. The first thing I would do is to isolate the device that you used, so that could be your laptop or your phone. This can be done through certain software which only an administrator can access. The indicators of compromise I would check are your logins, so whether the IP addresses are out of the ordinary or from a totally different location. Then I would run a scan on your device to see if there's any virus infection, followed by any unusual outbound activity which might indicate data breach. After that, I would obtain a copy of the original email and start the analysis. I would note down the sender's email since it's an impersonation attempt, so I can block it off our system later. The next thing I would do is to download the attachment for analysis. Keep in mind, it's okay to download files even if they might contain a virus. As long as you don't open them, then the program won't be able to execute. There are many ways you can check an attachment. I prefer opening it in a sandbox environment, which is basically a virtual machine that is completely separate from your device. I'm going to use AnyRAM for this because it's a really neat platform which allows us to extract the IOCs. Alright, so now we're on the sandbox environment on AnyRAM. And if this is your first time seeing a sandbox environment, there's a lot going on, so you might be easily overwhelmed. So this particular sandbox run is actually from a real incident response, so I thought it would be a good example for you guys to see. On the bottom left, we can see more information on this sandbox session, so stuff like connections, IP addresses, DNS requests, and different types of threats that were detected from these connections. So in this particular example, we can see it's part of a social engineering attempt on one of our employees. We can see it's trying to mimic a Microsoft login page, and the easiest way to see that it's not Microsoft is up in the website link. So we can see here up on the website link that there's no mention of Microsoft anywhere, so that's a huge red flag. And on the right here, we can see that it's been highlighted as malicious activity, so any run has automatically detected that this is a phishing attempt. And on the bottom left here, we can see in the threats panel that any run has automatically flagged this as a possible social engineering. So this confirms our suspicion, even though it's pretty obvious already. So going back to the right side, we can click on IOCs, and it'll give you a list of all the indicators of compromises. So stuff like the file hashes, the domains, and all the IP connections that relates to the website. So now that I have enough IOCs, I would begin the next phase of the incident response, which is remediation. The first thing I would do is to block the sender's email address from our system. Then I would scan everyone's mailbox for similar email and delete them all off. Using the IOCs provided from our sandbox environment, I would also block all the website links to prevent anyone from accessing them. On top of that, I would do a check on all the IP addresses and block the malicious ones on our firewall. Once I've completed all the remediation steps, 
Then the final step is documentation. This step is often quite boring, but very necessary to make sure we have logs in case we get an audit. I would have to document details like when the incident first happened, when it was first brought to our attention, how long did it take to resolve this incident, and how we can prevent this from happening again in the future. Once the documentation has been completed, then we can officially conclude this incident response. Hope this video has been helpful in understanding more about the basics of cybersecurity. This is just a small but common example of the job. There are other responsibilities in cybersecurity like handling vulnerabilities, risk management, and so on. That's it from me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.